Class, which is my podcast about knitting and crocheting and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and on my website newleafdesigns.nl. All of the other things I will list right here um, so you can find me in other places. Um, so it feels like it's only been one week since my last podcast, but basically <laughs> I did upload my podcast just one week ago. I had some um, difficulties while editing the podcast. As some of you may know, I have been able to purchase a new video editing software for the podcast and other videos. And I've been able to do that because of my Patreon. So a huge, huge thank you to everyone. To <laughs> everyone? <-y? laughs> To everyone or everybody who um, supports the channel on my Patreon page. So, but uh, there has been a huge learning curve for me with this new editing software. Uh, it's very, very different from the one I used before, uh, but it works much faster once you do get to, um, you know work with it. So I don't edit my podcast video in one go, usually. Uh, um, I usually do it in two mornings or two evenings or one morning, one evening. So I, I tend to close the laptop in, in, you know, in the middle of editing. And usually when I open the laptop, it's fine. I can just continue editing. But this time, the program completely froze and I had to do everything again. So, reminder for myself to save <laughs> my project file uh, before it's too late. I feel, I feel like I'm 15 years old again with this post-it on my computer desktop. Remember to save. Uh, when I was playing The Sims because The Sims was my favorite game, but uh, with all of the um, uh, All of the different packs that I would install it would get So big that it would be too heavy for my computer and Sometimes it would just crash and I would lose all of my progress and this kind of feels like that <laughs> although I wish I was playing The Sims right oh I loved it anyway uh, so that's why I had some difficulties editing and the podcast was a week late but I'm back now and I have some fresh product products projects to share with you Pro apparently it's the week that I can't pronounce anything okay so, what am I going to start with? They're all new, I think. I don't think I've showed you all of them. But I'm going to start with the one that is um, oldest for me. So, I cast this on a couple of weeks ago, I think. I'm not sure why I didn't share it before. Uh, so I am making a second pair of my Madeleine Love socks, which is my own pattern. Uh, it's a colorwork sock pattern, but the colorwork pattern is really, really simple. So here it is. And the sample I had before um, were two shades of salmon. So you might, um, th this one looks very, very different, but you might know uh, the sample I'm talking about. Uh, so the color work is just these little hearts. It's just a single stitch, but I think it's so cute because it just looks like a heart. Um, so cute. And I'm using um, Lung Ya Wool, which is this one. And this is a uh, sock yarn and you get a little bobbin of reinforcing thread with it, which is really nice. Uh, so I, you hold that double with the yarn. I mean one strand of the reinforcing thread and one strand of yarn. And um, so I did the toe. Um, and I haven't done it in the heel because I didn't know if there would be enough reinforcing thread because it doesn't say how many meters. Um, yeah. So I use it for the toes only. 
and the uh, mint green is Scapis Invicta. Uh, Scapis Invicta Extra, I mean. I love this suck yarn. Um, and then for the cuff, I've used a lavender yarn that I had in my stash. Uh, I have bought it in China a lot of years ago, and um, yeah, it's 50% wool, 50% acrylic, so it's not really suitable for socks, so I'm using it only on the cuff. But I think it looks cute. Yeah, so I'm uh, past the heel on the second sock now. And this is going really, really smoothly. Um, I may have used a bigger needle on the second sock because it looks a lot bigger. But um, yeah, so I might have to block this to be the same size as this. Um, yes, but I'm loving these colors. And trying to show you my progress keeper on here, which is a pot of tea. Very, very cute. I got this in a mystery package uh, with the Alice in Wonderland theme uh, from uh, Het Wool Based last year. Um, I got the big Alice in Wonderland sock blank and some uh, stitch markers and a needle cozy, so that was really nice. Um, and I love this stitch marker. So I've been taking this um, to work, um, working on it in the lunch breaks, but I have to be caref careful because I'm knitting these socks for one of my colleagues and I don't want her to see it. <laughs> yeah, but... This will be a Christmas present, Yee! and I'm so excited, I love these. Oh, I want to make a pair for myself as well, but I'll have to buy more yarn, as I only bought 50 grams of each. So those were my Madly in Love socks. Uh, so the pattern is available in my Ravelry store and also in the web shop of my own website, newleafdesigns.nl. And it is a free PDF download for my Willow and Elder patrons. So if you wanted to support me on Patreon and if you're into these socks then go and take a look because I uh, so the pattern is for free and uh, I also have um, a video of at least an hour long that will take you from start to finish on these socks so be sure to have a look um, up next so I have two new cast ons next and one is crochet one is knitting and the crochet one, so I'm pretty sure that if I showed you this, that you would not be able to guess what it is. <laughs> I would not be able to guess what it is. Um, so I've been crocheting this, uh, which looks like a bunch of leaves or feathers. Uh, it's very, very tiny crochet. I have a two millimeter needle, but actually the pattern suggests a 1.75 millimeter needle, but I'm using a little bit thicker yarn. Um, and this is going to be a cardigan. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is one part of the sleeve and it will go like this. <laughs> I know what you're thinking because this looks like your nanny's crochet like um, doilies and tablecloths and you know crochet curtains and um, those little crochet edges to put in um, cutlery closet and stuff but no it's a super cool bohemian um, cardigan and it's from the yarn folk and I'm super excited about this. So um, when I saw this issue, I gasped out loud when I 
no, when I saw this card again. I'm trying to find the picture now. <laughs> so it's made by Susan Walsh from Pepper Goose Design. And um, it's called the Olga Cardigan. And take a look. It is so, so beautiful. I love it. I love how bohemian it looks. And I think it will go with everything that I own. And so the sleeve I made is this part here. Not sure if it will focus. So this part. And I'm so excited. I think this will be really gorgeous. So um, the pattern uses Scapius Sweet Treat, which is a very thin 100% uh, cotton yarn. And um, I don't know, I just wanted to crochet this in a whirlash because I've wanted to work, I've been wanting to work with this yarn for a long time and it's just slightly thicker um, but also a lot softer. So yeah, I mean, and I can use a slightly bigger crochet hook because <laughs> a cardigan with 1.75 millimeter hook. Yeah, <laughs> maybe later. <laughs> so I'm using a whirlette for this. And for those of you who don't know, uh, a whirlette is the solid color version of a Scapius whirl. Uh, and I only need three of these for the cardigan. Um, and I don't, I don't think I will use all of the third one. So one ball is 100 grams, I think think at 455 meters um, so yeah it's pretty much fingering weight but because it's cotton um, the thread is a little bit heavier than regular sock yarn so that means it is thinner um, so for the same amount of grams you get a thinner yarn um, yes so I have just completed these, this sleeve cuff and now I just have to join it somehow. I haven't looked at the pattern yet for how to do that, but I'm guessing some, some way like this. Okay. Yeah, and this is pretty fast. I crocheted this in two days. Um, and I don't mean two full days, so yeah. But it's so, so fun because it's not like anything I've made before. And I love this and I love the color. Um, I have a lot of navy tops and dark green tops and I think this will go so beautifully. Yay! So um, the sweet treat the original yarn has so many colors and um, the Whirlette has a great selection of colors but way less than the uh, Sweet Treat. I think Sweet Treat has about 70 colors. Amazing. So you could go for a way more vibrant mustard in the Sweet Treat or this beautiful burgundy or plum. Mm. Yeah, so I might make more, but first I'm going to make this one in Whirlet. I'm really excited about that. And I've noticed that a lot of people, of course, are starting to make stuff from Yarn Folk. And I thought it would be fun to do a little low-key crochet or knit along for this, or maybe just make along. Um, just a little low-key make along and everyone can share their project, share what they're doing. Would that be fun? I think I'm opening a thread on Ravelry for this and then everyone who wants to join along can just join and you know post their pictures or links to their project page and um, because I think it's so fun to see 
uh, projects other people have made so um, from one of my patterns sleeping reindeer uh, my three testers have all put their projects up on Ravelry and it's so so fun to see and also for the winterberry socks oh I forget where they are in the book there they are so just this morning I noticed that there was another project page for my winterberry socks and I'm just so excited every time that I see a new project page. So um, yeah, just, you know, if you're planning to make stuff from the uh, yarn folk uh, bookazine, why not do it together, you know? I think it would be fun. My mom is making one of these. A Farrah shawl. So, so pretty. A Farrah scarf, sorry. It's so pretty. So this uses seven balls of CAP's alpaca, but my mom is using seven or eight different colors. <laughs> so it will be kind of like a uh, Doctor Who scarf. I think it will be amazing. She's using colors that she wears all the time. So mustard green, petrol blue, um, a gray, and then a couple shades of pink, and then another blue. Oh, it will be amazing. So I can't wait to see that. And, um, and I don't know if you saw, but on Instagram, uh, there's the guy with the hook. And he uh, made one of these stockings last week and it was so, so pretty. And he made it in different colors, but it looked so good. And I think it only took him a couple of hours. Um, and I mean, it's a beautiful design. It's by Louise Crossley. And I know, like no other, that a color work is super addictive. Uh, so you could totally finish these, a um, couple of these by Christmas time. So you can have Santa fill them. Yeah, so many beautiful projects. Yay! Yes, so let me know if you want to join along. And I'll open the Ravelry thread anyway. And you can just join in. And if you decide to join either on Ravelry or on Instagram or Facebook, you can use the hashtags Scapius Folk Along and Yarn Bookazine. Alrighty, so I have one more project to share with you. So I have a lot more whips, but um, I don't know what it is, but I just decided to work on all new things this week. It was super weird. So I haven't been working on my strip rainbow. Well, it is a super addictive pattern. I just, I don't know, I just uh, cast it on all the things. And I haven't worked on my striped and stranded socks. So yeah, probably next time. <laughs> but uh, so I've cast on for a new hat. And this hat won't be for me, it will be for a friend. And I don't think she watches the podcast, I don't think so. But um, so uh, in the last year, um, uh, one of my former classmates has been diagnosed with breast cancer, which was a shock to hear, you know, that someone my age already has breast cancer. It kind of makes you think about things you shouldn't be thinking about and um but um yeah she is just she is amazing under all of this and um she's just you know taking life like in the best way possible and um doing a lot of fun stuff and uh, I don't know I just I just wanted to uh, send her a care package um, this winter and because when we were back at university she was one of the very very first people that I ever knit a hat for um, and we were both so excited about it and I think it turned out way too big but she was super kind about it and said it's, it fits perfectly <laughs> so um, yeah Anyway, I've come a long way since then, and uh, I wanted to knit her a couple of hats to wear this winter, and um, 
um, yeah, because of course she has shaven her head, so she's lost all her hair, and uh, she has a wig now, and um, yeah, I mean, of course I'm super um, happy for her that she has a wig that is so natural for her, so um, she, uh, they actually had her come in before she shaved her head and then she, and they made a wig that's almost exactly like um, the hairdo she had before um, but I can imagine you don't want to wear the wig the whole time so I'm making one hat that will be super soft I'm using baby alpaca for that and that will be super warm so if she doesn't want to wear the wig she can wear uh, the hat and I'm also making a um, a little bit thinner hat um, to wear on top of the wig um, yeah and I, I just you know I hope I'm doing this right because a lot of people with cancer can uh, sometimes um, be super sensitive um, of some types of fiber um, so I'm trying to use the softest fiber I can find. Um, yeah, and I messaged her mother <laughs> on Facebook to find out her uh, head circumference. Um, and she was able to, um, to measure her head with, you know, just lame excuse and then send me the measurements. So that was really fun. <laughs> Um, so anyway, this is the thinner hat that I'm uh, planning. So I am uh, making a mithril beanie or mithril, I don't know. It's a Lord of the Rings reference. It's some kind of lightweight metal. <laughs> and so this hat uh, was also meant to be very lightweight. And I love the stitch pattern. So it's the honeycomb stitch pattern. Um, the Mithril Beanie is designed by Katie Fustich, <laughs> or yeah, Fustich, I don't know, Katie, anyway, I will link her name down below and her blog, and uh, so the name is the Mithril Beanie, and uh, it's um, three inches of ribbing that you can then fold over, and there's a honeycomb stitch pattern which is so beautiful and I've wanted to knit this for a very long time um, I just love it it kind of um, it kind of reminds me of brioche because one um, you kind of alternate two rows and one row is almost like brioche so you knit two stitches together and then the next one you just slip and do a yarn over. It's just almost exactly like um, brioche. And oh, so I'm loving the colors. And I remember my friend, uh, her name is Alice. I remember Alice being fond of uh, all kinds of purple and pink and um, yeah. And I love this color. So this yarn is uh, Scapies Art Tribe. And this is the Miss Nariss colorway, which is beautiful shades of aqua and pink and purple and a little bit of minty green in there as well. I love, love, love this. And so there's a color, uh, there's a fair, variegated ombre kind of thing going on. And I just love these colors. Um, and my plan is that I'm using this yarn first and then I will be fading into the semi colorway, um, which is very close to uh, Miss Norris, but much lighter. So I hope that will turn out nicely. Or maybe I will finish the whole hat with just Miss Norris, but I'm not sure if, I, if I'll have enough. Um, yeah, but I'm so excited about this and um, so it's 70% superwash merino, 30% uh, uh, polyamide, so, and it is so soft, um, so 
yeah but this is meant to wear on top of the wig so i'm hoping she doesn't get any allergic reaction to this um you know it's it's possible but uh, so i hope she won't um yay oh i'm so excited and i only cast this on yesterday i think uh and it's it's working up really quickly so i'm happy about that um and i am <laughs> using a matching stitch marker or progress keeper no it's a stitch marker this time <laughs> um from undercover otter and it's a galaxy um stitch marker so it's a glass ball with stars in it so cute and I just noticed that I made a mistake or yeah I think so well I think it might just be um, yeah it's the transitioning of the rounds when I go from one round to the other kind of looks different but um, yeah I'm guessing that's just uh, the way it is with the honeycomb pattern in the round. So, but I am loving this. I I don't know if you can see it properly, but it's like oh, I love this. Uh, so I remember having a sweater with a stitch pattern like this a couple of years ago, and when I started knitting, I just could not figure out what this was. I could not figure it out. And now I'm so happy that I finally found this stitch and I think my friend Tammy might also have a uh, pattern that uses this stitch uh, which is her head in the clouds cowl I think so it's a cowl and it uses the stitch all around um, beautiful yes love 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 this stitch okay so those were my projects um i do have some fun other things to show you because i bought yarn again stash addict strikes again because yarn is not enough it needs to be stash yeah so where's my yarn so this yarn I'm going to share first, I actually received at the end of September, but there were so many things happening be between then and now that I completely forgot about it, <laughs> which is very weird because it's amazing yarn. And this yarn has been sent to me by my lovely patron, Carrie. Hi, Carrie. And Carrie has uh, generously gifted me some of her hand dyed yarn, which is from Show Real Studios. And so, which one I'm gonna show you first? Okay, I'm gonna show you this one. It's her sock base, stalwart sock. And the uh, color wear name is called Mockingbird. And this was part of her uh, Texas. Um, Texas Heritage series, I think, or Texas Fall series. Anyways, Texas themed because she is based in Texas. And oh, look at this, so pretty. And this is her logo. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe they do um, animal suits as well. I think so, I've looked it up on their Instagram. And there's a little um, French fry <laughs> progress keeper here. I love French fries. <laughs> yeah, so this is her sock base, and it's a high twist. Um, it's 75% merino, 25% uh, uh, nylon. It's all super wash, uh, and it's 410 meters per 400 grams. And this is just beautiful. Um, so... I think with the name Mockingbird and with the colors, it just kind of makes me think of Game of Thrones, that like winter is coming. <laughs> uh, all shades of gray, um, beige, browns, a little hint of blue. Oh, beautiful. I think these will make a gorgeous pair of socks. I think they would. So, so beautiful. And look, even the inside of her yarn tag is colored. How fun is that? So that's her sock base. 
I'm not sure if she has her shop running already at the moment, but I will check and I will put the link here on the screen for you. And then she also sent me two skeins of her DK weight yarn, uh, which is called Delectable DK. It's 250 meters uh, on hanograms of 100% superwash merino. And this one is called Slew Foot Sue, which I had to look up. And uh, it's a um, cartoon character, and she kind of made me think of Betty Boop. Uh, I'll put in a picture right here. Ah, she's so cute. So, so cute. And um, yeah, so I think I have some YouTubing to do later if they have any videos available. But yeah, even without the reference, I love this colorway. You know, I, blues and greens are my jam. Um, and this is just gorgeous. So it's beautiful sky blue um, with some sea green in there, some darker blue, some very light purple. Oh, this is gorgeous. And there are some uh, undyed areas as well. Very, very beautiful. Um, so being a decay weight I'm kind of thinking of incorporating these in a sweater or maybe a hat or maybe some gloves Ooh, some gloves maybe if you have any ideas let me know okay I have a couple of skeins more to share um, almost directly after the after I filmed the last podcast episode, I purchased some yarn of Nicole C. Mendes, who is a German indie dyer who does amazing self-striping sock yarns. And I got this one. Oh, look at it. So pretty. So this one is called Poppy. And it has different shades of pink and aqua and green. And uh, this is on her strong sock base, which is 75% virgin wool and 25% nylon. And I also got a bag of minis. There it is. And most of it is self-striping yarn as well. So I think that's really fun to just have self-striping minis that you can use for, um, you know, heels, heels and toes. Isn't that pretty? And this one. And some of them are simply variegated. But I love those as well. And then Nicole, who's such a sweetie, popped in another skein of the same colorway, but a different base for one of you guys. So this is her soft sock base which is 80% uh, virgin wool, which is extra fine merino, and 20% polyamide. And it does feel a lot softer. So this will go into the podcast gift basket. And uh, when I have a, another giveaway, I will put this one into that giveaway. So thank you so much, Nicole, for donating this prize to the podcast. And yay! I will be having so much fun knitting up a pair of socks with this one. I have, I still have another um, colorway by Nicole C. Mendes. It's right there. Well, you can't really see it now. But um, it's the uh, Little Red Riding Hood colorway that you might know from uh, Amy from a Stranded Podcast. <clears throat> Uh, who knit some um, Christmas socks out of that one because it does look a little bit Christmassy. Um, and I think she might have uh, knit that for her uh, festive sock along last year. Um, and I couldn't help but get that one as well. Um, and now I got this one. Yay! Um, yeah, so fun. I haven't decided yet if I'm just going to knit this up as a vanilla sock or if I'm going to pair it with another yarn to make stranded socks so I'm not sure yet but I am in need of another simple striped sock so I might just use this yarn for that 
And then I bought some yarn from Chestnut Cabin. Chestnut Cabin is a Dutch indie dyer. Um, and this is the baby alpaca I was uh, telling you about earlier. Uh, this is also going to be a hat for my friend Alice and it is super soft so I hope that it will be soft enough for her skin and um, I've been told that uh, alpaca is also hypoallergenic so that um, you know people usually don't have any reactions to alpaca and this is a baby alpaca. Oh my goodness, it's a DK weight yarn, 200 meters per 100 grams, and 100% baby alpaca. I got two of them because they had an amazing sale. These were only like 12 euro skein, which is insane. Um, so I got two, and I'm thinking, so I'm thinking to make a brioche hat with this with another color, but I would have to see which other yarn in my stash is as soft as this. Um, so I'd have to see. If I cannot find one, I might just use, um, I might just do a single color um, hat, but then with a nice texture pattern so that it's nice and warm and thick. Um, yay. And, um, Andrea from Chestnut Cabin was very kind and included a little progress keeper from CQ Handmade. It's a yarn ball with two knitting needles in there, or one knitting needle and one crochet, I can't tell. Anyway, a ball of yarn with needles. And she also included a little sample of, um, oh, where did I put it? It's her Pasquale face, which is 90% cotton, Pima cotton, and 10% cashmere. It's really interesting. So it has, it's cotton with a soft sheen, and it's um, beautiful mint green color. So this is really, really cute. I might make a Christmas ornament out of this. Color is not really showing up, I think. It, it uh, is different shades of uh, minty green. And, um... Oh, yeah. There you see it a little bit. So different shades of green. Beautiful. So yeah, I think I will make a Christmas ornament with this, um, maybe crochet, because I like to crochet with cotton. Um, yeah, so <laughs> those were my stash acquisitions for this time. I'm so um, shocked that I've been uh, able to hoard so much yarn in the last two months. I mean, after Yarndale. I thought I had bought all the yarn and then at knitting and stitching show I bought two more skeins and then now I mean right I mean oh my god stash addict strikes again <sighs> yes but you know I have a project planned with this and I have a project planned with this and one with this as well, so it's not too bad, right? <laughs> ah, okay, I, I really think I must um, keep myself from casting on all the things in the next week because I just, I want to finish this hat first and I can finish these socks too. These are almost finished. I mean, the cardigan will take a little bit longer but um, that's been really fun to work on. So that will be my treat um, um, if I complete any of the others. Um, yes, and then I need to get back on my Shavrimbo cowl, um, Shavrimbo blanket, because we have a cowl for that at the moment. Uh, it's running until February the 1st, uh, and there is still plenty of time. So we started October 1st, and... 
some of the people already finished their blanket within October. So that's crazy. Um, I remember crocheting mine in two months when I did my first one. And this one is over halfway finished, I think. So yeah, I'm uh, making pretty good progress, um, even if I haven't done anything for two weeks now. Yeah. So I have to get back on that and uh, do remember to let me know if you're into the yarn folk along, uh, I mean escapees folk along. Uh, yeah, I will open a thread in the Ravelry group so you can uh, share your pics or just, you know, come and chatter along with us and um, share your favorites from the book. Oh, right, and I'm not sure if I'll publish this in time, but there's a uh, Scapius Folk blog hop going on. Um, and each of the designers uh, posts something about their design on their own blog. They tell the backstory or, you know, in case of Nerissa, she had a completely different design in mind um, when she first started her Frida shawl. Um, and with Oh yeah, from the little bee. Oh my god, her dress. Oh, it's her dress went on a whole adventure. So that's really a blog worth reading. And um, I just published my blog, uh, my blog post today, which is November eighth, which will not be the day that this is going up. Sorry. Um, and I have linked all of the other uh, blog posts in my post, so you can visit them from there. So. Just uh, if you uh, want some, want to do some reading, and there is a giveaway involved as well. If you, um, every blogger uh, puts one secret symbol, and you know it will be big and bold, um, and puts a secret symbol in their blog post, and if you collect those and put them in the right order, then you will have a secret sentence, and you can share that on the uh, Scapius Facebook page. I have linked the Facebook page uh, where you can share it. I've shared that in my blog post. And uh, then you can win a Scapies Yarn bookazine and all the yarn you need for your favorite project. So be sure to check that out. Um, it will run until November, 8, November 11th. So I will do my best to get this podcast up before then. All right. I think that's all from me uh, this week. Thank you all so much for watching and a huge, huge thank you to all of my patrons for supporting the channel. Um, if you do like my videos, please like and subscribe. It really helps to get my podcast seen by more people. So that's really, really appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.